Welcome to Microsoft Access Beginner Level 1, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com here on YouTube. This video is Lesson 1 of 12 plus an introduction. If you skip the introduction video and want to watch it now, click on the link shown to start this course in the beginning. Otherwise, we'll start Lesson 1 right now. In Lesson 1, we're going to learn about database terminology. You'll learn what a database is, and you'll learn about the parts of an access database, including tables, queries, forms, and reports. Before we get started working with Access today, let's go over some basic database terminology. A computer database is a program that lets you store, organize, and manipulate data. Databases are great for storing large amounts of information. You can use a database to organize that information by generating different reports and queries. And you can use a database to manipulate the data, actually make changes to it. In the days before computers, data would be stored on paper, usually in a ledger book or on index cards. For example, to keep track of your customers, you'd make a series of index cards with one customer per card. You'd have a separate drawer of cards for the products that you sold or the suppliers that you did business with. However, as efficient as this may have seemed at the time, it was very time-consuming to sort through the cards or to search through a large drawer of cards for some particular bit of information. When the first computers came along, the earliest databases were really nothing more than glorified text documents. They were great at storing information, and they certainly made searching and sorting easier. However, they lacked many features we take for granted today, such as the ability to recognize relationships between the different types of data. For example, you could have a list of customers with some basic details, but if you want to look up information on their purchases, you would have to look in a different file. The earliest databases had no way to relate this information together. This creates many problems, including having multiple copies of the same information in different places, such as the customer's name and address. Updating all that information can be a nightmare. Fortunately, Microsoft Access does recognize relationships. That's one of its strong points, but much more on that later. The next progression was for people to store their data in spreadsheets like Microsoft Excel. Excel is a great tool for storing small amounts of information and for analyzing data, but when it comes to large amounts of information, using Excel can be cumbersome. If you've got more than a few hundred rows of data, you really should be using a database like Microsoft Access. Plus, Excel has the same problem that early databases did. It's not relational. There's no way to link your customers to their orders or products to their suppliers and so on. In addition, Excel can be difficult for novice users to work with. If you don't know how to use Excel, finding the information you want can be daunting. Whereas with Access, you can build a nice user-friendly interface for beginners to easily find their way around. Plus, it's much easier to secure an Access database than an Excel spreadsheet to keep people from messing with data they shouldn't be playing with. You can control exactly what people can do in your Microsoft Access database. So this brings us, finally, to the modern database. In my opinion, Microsoft Access is the best desktop database application available. An Access database can store large amounts of data, much more than an Excel spreadsheet or a simple text document. An Access database can recognize relationships between your data. For example, if you keep track of customers and their orders, you can store all of your customer details in one place, all of the order information in another place, and Access can relate those two together so you don't need lots of redundant information copied throughout your database. You don't need to, for example, copy all of the customer's information to each order that he places. The database can track that for you automatically. One of the problems with spreadsheets and older database applications is that you have little or no control over what kinds of information get put into your database fields. With Access, you can specify exactly what types of data the user can type into each field. This will prevent, for example, a number where the customer's last name should be, or a four-digit phone number. 
or a missing zip code if you want to force that. Access gives you strict controls over the structure of your data, and that's a great thing. Yes, it's possible to set up data validation in Microsoft Excel, but in Access, it's much easier to do. And you can specify more elaborate rules. Access is a great tool for you to build a database for other people to work with. You can design a very user-friendly interface so they don't get lost. All of the data entry forms and reports that they need to work with can be presented for them in a nice, simple menu. Plus, since you, the developer, control the interface, you can easily secure your database and lock them out of sections they shouldn't see. Sure, there's a bit of a learning curve to initially get your database set up, but once it's built, you will definitely save time in the long run. Now, Access is a great tool by itself, and I've personally built Access databases that have run in very small companies with two to five employees and fairly large companies with 100 employees. Access can certainly handle a lot of traffic. However, if you do eventually outgrow your Access database, you don't have to lose all of your work. You can upscale your database to a more powerful back-end database server like Microsoft's SQL Server. You simply send all of the tables and the data up to the server, and you can keep the interface, the forms and the reports, and the queries that you've built, and work with those in Access. You get the best of both worlds. Now that we know what a database is, and what the benefits of using a Microsoft Access database are, let's talk about the parts of an Access database. An Access database consists of data and the tools to work with that data. What are these tools? An Access database consists of tables, queries, forms, reports, and optionally macros and modules. Tables are used to store data, queries to organize data, forms to display data on the screen and to edit that data, reports for printing out data, and optionally for more advanced users, macros are used to automate tasks, and modules give you the full visual basic programming language inside of your Access databases. Now I have macros and modules grayed out because you can build a fantastic database in Microsoft Access without ever using a macro or a module. I cover macros in my advanced classes and module programming in my developer level classes. But all you really need are tables, queries, forms, and reports. All data in your Access database is stored in one or more tables. You can think of a table like a single Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. However, tables give you much more control over the types of data that can be input into them. For example, here you see part of a customer table. Tables are made up of a collection of fields. Each field holds a specific type of data. For example, here I have highlighted the last name field in red. This field should only store the customer's last name and nothing else. In fact, you can specify rules in the database to force fields to only contain certain types of information, like text, numbers, dates, currency values, and so on. Fields are also sometimes referred to as columns, just like in an Excel spreadsheet. All of the data concerning one item is stored in a record. Each record consists of the collection of all of the fields of data for that item. In this customer table, for example, each record represents one customer. Here, I've highlighted one customer, Alan Watson, in red. You can think of a record like a row in an Excel spreadsheet. You might not always be storing customers. In a product table, for example, each record would represent one product. In an order table, each record would represent one order. In a timesheet table, each record might represent one instance of an employee clocking in or out. So your tables can store many different types of data, people, places, events, and so on. Now the data in your tables might not be stored in any particular order. 
you might have hundreds of thousands of records in your table, and the boss says to you, I want to see a list of only customers from New York sorted by last name. That's what a query is used for. A query is normally used to display data in different ways. You can sort your data or apply criteria to only view specific types of data. Queries can be saved and used later so you don't have to keep redesigning them. And someone with very little access knowledge can run your query simply by double-clicking on it. Queries can also be used to modify data, add, delete, or even edit records. We'll learn more about these types of queries in our expert classes. For today, just keep in mind that queries let you view the data in your tables in different ways. Forms allow you to build a nice, user-friendly interface to work with data on the screen. Whether you're building a database just for yourself or for other people to work with, forms are a major time saver. You can display information however you want. You can include just the types of data that you want your users to work with. You can combine information from multiple tables, such as displaying a summary of a customer's orders on the customer form. You can secure your fields so users can only modify specific data and can only see other types of data. You may not want your end users seeing credit card numbers, for example. You can display calculations on your forms, such as the total number of days an employee has missed work. Your forms can also contain drop-down lists, so users can select data. Command buttons allow us to perform tasks, such as opening other forms or finding records. In fact, you can turn a form into a main menu for other forms. The benefits of working with forms go on and on, but essentially, you'll build the interface with which users will work with your data out of forms. You never want users to have to work directly with your tables and queries, and you'll see why in upcoming classes. Reports are specifically designed to present data to people who are not using your database. You can print a report out. You can send it to someone as an email attachment, as a PDF file. You can use reports for customer information, invoices, product catalogs, mailing labels, charts, and lots more. Anything you want to present to someone else can be designed as a report. Finally, an access database can contain macros and modules. These are more advanced topics that we'll cover in later classes. In a nutshell, macros are generally used to automate repetitive tasks or carry out simple actions. Modules contain visual basic programming code that can really take your database to a professional level. Now again, you can build a great database without ever touching a macro or a module, and we'll cover these later in our more advanced classes. Microsoft Access can build two different types of databases. There are desktop databases and web apps. Now a desktop database is the classic traditional database that runs on your PC and you can set it up to run on the network in your office for multiple users. A web app involves working with access databases through a web browser. This course will focus on using only desktop databases. Web apps are still in their infancy and they're okay for building real simple databases. But if you want to get down to business, stick with the desktop database. In the future, I will be developing a custom seminar just on building web app databases. For more information, visit my website at accesslearningzone.com. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment below. I post new videos all the time, so be sure to subscribe to my channel for updates. Click to begin lesson two now. And also, Click to visit my website, accesslearningzone.com, for more free videos and to sign up for the entire Level 2 series for just $1.